Hey everyone, my name is Lee Tong, and for today I will be showing you a tutorial about this retro chrome cool looking text effect which a lot of clothing brands have been using. I say it's pretty popular among the text effect designs, and it looks something like this. Alright, without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So after you select a format, go ahead and place a black background to better display the font while you're making it. You can choose any font that you like. In my case, I want to go for the gothic look, so I chose the Amador font, which I think it'll go great with the text effect. Looks very sinister. Okay, this is totally optional, but I would recommend to work the font to make it more interesting to look at, more characteristic as well. If that's not your thing, it's totally fine, don't worry about it. But if you do, remember to convert the text into a smart object before working. After you're satisfied with your text, go to layers and right click the text layer. You'll find bedding option on the top. Enable bevel and emboss. This will make the text bulk up giving it a 3D look. In this window, we'll see a bunch of options and uh, first of all, we'll keep inner bevel and smooth at its place. Set the depth to a thousand percent. We'll keep the direction up. Size will keep it to 30, uh, soften around 5. Angle and altitude will change later depends on the product, so we don't have to worry about that at the moment. For the glass contour, you can choose anything that you like, alright? Highlight mode will be adjusted to screen and we'll have to set the opacity to 100%. For the shadow mode, it'll stay at multiply and have 60% opacity instead. And a second will enable inner shadow. For the inner shadow, we'll keep distance and choke to 0% in pixels, and we'll set the size to around 13, 15%, we'll set to 15, 15 pixels, yes. Press okay. After you're satisfied with your, wait, what the f After you're satisfied with your tech, after you're finished with the bending options, um, go ahead and create a folder and place it into the folder like so. Go to adjustment section and choose curves. Place it on top of the folder like so and create clipping mask. In the curves graph, we will be adding a few more points to it. Alright, all done. Next, let's create some gradients onto the text by adding the gradient map in the adjustments and create a clipping mask on top of curves. I've put some color suggestions that you can look into if you're interested, of course. After finish applying the gradient onto the text, I would recommend go back to bevel and emboss and do some adjusting. And this is when you do the adjustment to uh, angle and altitude, if you would like, of course. The original altitude and angle looks good as well, so I'm not going to do any adjusting. Let's add sparks onto the text effect to make it even shinier. We'll click polygon tools. We'll set the fill to white. We'll set the stroke to transparent. Over here, set this number to four because we have four sides of the spark. Click the gear icon that looks something like this. Uh, we'll set the thickness to one pixel. Color will stay at default. Check unconstrained. Uh, set the start ratio to 5%. And check a smooth start indents and from center. After that, you're basically all set. Go ahead, hold shift like so. Make sure to set it up on top of everything. You'll make something like this. Convert this to smart object like so. And go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and place it around 1.5 pixels. Like so. Add a layer on top of the spark, then use the soft brush to dot in between the cross. 
and finally merge the spark and the soft brush into one layer. Duplicate the spark and place them onto the text in different spots with different sizes as well to make it more realistic. After we finish placing sparks, we can put all of them into a folder by clicking the first one at the bottom and while holding shift, click the first one on the top, then click the folder icon. We're almost there. Let's add some final touch ups. Let's, 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 let's add some final touch ups by selecting all the layers except for the background then shortcut option command plus e to make a merged copy of what you just selected next go to filter select blur then select gaussian blur and apply it onto the merge copy set it up around 2.5 pixels it's good might look a bit weird at first but please trust the process. We'll go to the blend mode of the layer next. Select lighten as our choice and bring down the opacity to 80, like so. Moving on to the background, let's make it better by adding a gradient overlay, like so. One last touch is to add noise to make a retro vintage feel as a whole, including the background and the text. We can do this simply by adding an empty layer, then shortcut shift plus delete and pop up the fill window like this. On this window, for the content, we will select 50% gray. We'll keep the mode normal. Opacity will set to 100%, like so. And after this, we will convert this layer into a smart object, like so. We'll head to filter, noise, add noise. Adjust the noise to about 20%. Select uniform and check monochromatic. And finally, select the soft light in the layer's blend mode and lower it to 80% opacity, like so. And done. Here is your finished product. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you liked how it turned out. I personally really like the style and design. So yeah, I'll see you guys. Goodbye.